show everyone your top. It's a crying emoji. <laughs> Lopsided crying emoji. I bought him that for Christmas. How are you? That's living in the ghetto. How are you feeling today? Are you crying emoji? Are you? <laughs> I'm not cry emoji. No. You know, I was thinking today, I thought, I don't actually know when you first knew you were depressed. We've never spoken about that. Do you think it goes from a child or from... What's your earliest memory of feeling... I think somebody the other day tweeted me, calls it the black bear. Is that a thing? Is that a known thing, black bear? I don't know. Or was that just that person said it? I like it. It's good, isn't it? I'm black fascinated bear. By, by bears. The black bear. You can hear squealing in the background. It's a teenage kid. We've been Dancing. <laughs> shunted into a 14-year-old's room. So if I'm distracted, it's because I'm looking at Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I was diagnosed with depression when I was 28 or 9. Yeah, I mean, I didn't trust the diagnosis, so I kind of... Were you? Yeah, um, well, I the first time you were—I mean, I knew you'd you'd been depressed for many years, but I thought the first diagnosis was a year ago. Well, no, the doctor in Wandsworth put me on a drug which I can't remember the name of, but it was one of those drugs that subsequently had a load of bad press because they claimed that it was responsible for people when they came off it being suicidal and killing themselves. Oh, I can't no. remember the name of it, but anyway, I, I rather—you could say stupidly—stopped taking it after a week because I felt so strange. And because in I was what a, way? Again, just didn't really feel myself. I didn't feel in connection in con connection with the world. I didn't feel... I felt it removed me too far from being me. And so I, I kind of preferred the thought of just being me with the rough edges. But I so was, was, it, I was, was living... was the feeling of removal worse than the feeling of depression? Well, yeah, because I'd heard... That was the first time I'd heard the word. And I think maybe the arrogance of an addict, I just chose to ignore it. And I chose to... I mean, I didn't feel it was... Well, I suppose... That's a good question. I was in therapy when I was at go uh, when I was at film school. I was I went in, I've, I've been in therapy. I've I've ended up seeing therapists at every stage of my life. I went to. Children. Didn't you were in therapy when you were at film school? At Goldsmiths, yeah. How old were you? I only remembered that the other day. Twenty-two. 21, Why? Twenty-one, twenty-two. Why were you? I mean, how did that happen? Uh, that was all around meeting my father for the first time. Oh. Um, and. I'd forgotten about that until recently, actually. But, uh, um, so that was, that was a good step. And then, I, I mean, if you wanted to go right way back, I mean, my, without getting into my childhood, I mean, my mum, I, I remember the teachers calling my mum in on a few occasions because they were worried about my behaviour. Uh, Why? Well, because they saw a child who was very... Around the age, it must have been around, I remember the classroom, so I must have been about nine or ten. And Mr Wood, who, I'm so fond of Mr Wood, he introduced me to animation. Um, he called my mum in and on a couple of occasions and just sort of said, look, we're worried. You know, and this was way before psychotherapy and people really had an understanding. So then, so, you know. Worried um, about what? Well, just the fact that I seemed very down and very oh, cross oh, and very, yeah, and very... Troubled, I think were his words. Oh, my mum, my mum's told me subsequently. No, no, oh, <laughs> that's not. I can't bear to think of you like nine. I was a troubled nine-year-old running around the football pitch, sweaty-headed. I'm very sweaty-headed now because I've just done a run. Um, yeah, but oh, I never knew that. I never so maybe knew Mr. Mr. Maybe Mr. Wood diagnosed. So I don't know if that was depression, but I mean, I think I was just dealing. It was a very chaotic childhood, and I suppose dealing with a lot of that. A lot of it was fun, because it, everything is fun to a kid, and then. One, is, one has no self-awareness as a kid, does one, as, as to how one's being. But that's the only external description of how I was that I can remember, if you know what I mean. So, so how did you know that? Did your mum then say to you? My mum's told me it, when I was much more oh. grown up. But I also remember at the time being called in and I remember there being a fuss. And I was quite a bit like Kiki. I was quite, I was quite aware of certain conversations. For example, I once asked my mum what an orgasm was. And because she was a lesbian, feminist, whatever, she went into such great detail, I actually looked at my watch and said, Mum, that's enough. 
<laughs> so you know, um, it, you know. So I was kind. Of, I have. I have. I, I have a memory of there being a lot of concern from you know. about nine. Yeah, well, no, at nine, and then when I went to, I was really, really down through throughout secondary school. I hated secondary school. It was, and all, but you know, again, for many years, I just looked back on that and thought that's what most teenagers go through. Well, know. I'm sure I'm. I mean, isn't it like anything? I mean, I remember when I was finally got my glasses when I was about eleven, and I could see. And before I could see, I always thought I could see as well as anybody else because that's all I could see. And mm. presumably, depression is the same that. If it's what you've always had, you wouldn't know that there was something. You no, might, exactly. You might see through sort of a foggy a fog that other people aren't, mm. don't seem as sad, but it would just be the norm, wouldn't it? Yeah, and also. But I just want to ask you again because yeah. it was my fault because I asked you something straight afterwards. When you were given your first medication, at what age? Twenty. No, no. So I was seeing seeing therapists from about the age of nineteen. Uh, must have. I was living with Chris, so I was living. It was a bachelor pad. It was a. So in your day. early twenties. Yeah. But you stopped Mid taking 20s. it after a week because you Two felt. Two weeks. Two or three. I mean, I can't remember exactly how long. No. I mean, but I, but I I'm didn't... just talking roughly. Yeah. So the distance from it, yeah. from yourself, yeah, was worse to you than the feeling of depression. Yes. So you stopped taking yes. it. Yes. Is it is it like feeling numb when you have these pills? Yeah. I mean, I felt like it on these pills that I'm taking at the moment, and. Towards the end of last year, I started to self-regulate the pills that I was taking. Yeah, well, that was a disaster, wasn't it? Yeah, and I'm now doing what the doctors have said, and and you know, at the moment, I'm not feeling that sort of deadened hum. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I suppose I don't feel as erratic, but that always worries me too. Why? Well, because we all like to be. You know, I don't know, there's something about feeling, I don't know if anyone else gets this, I, you, you want to feel real. And if real is up and down, it's up and down. You're always up and down. Huh? No pillars ever stop you being really high and then low. No, no, I know, but I mean, but there is a sort of But maybe you're wanting the out. extreme and the extreme. Maybe. The extreme is actually what is really hard to I mean, live I, with, one actually, because I mean, when you go too high, that is too. That is really hard because though we're all enjoying it, one gets scared that you're going to crash too low as well. Yeah. So when you have a childhood that's chaotic and which has extreme sharp jabs of drama, violence, action, unexpectedness, surprises, what seems like your world falling apart, I think you become physically and emotionally and systematically attached to the highs, the lows, that becomes a pattern in your life going mm -hmm. up and down. Because and it becomes a, it's a rhythm that you're kind of used to. And I think drink, drugs, all helped, you know, illegal drugs, all helped manufacture the highs, the lows, the highs, the lows, so that you could, because it was, and that was a safe zone. Mm. And so I think the reason I'm struggling with the pills is, um, they they clip the, the they clip the tops and they clip the bottoms off and they kind of give you this even keel, but it feels alien. So I suppose it's more that it feels alien. Yeah, maybe you've just got to get used to it. Maybe yeah. it's just yeah, yeah, it's just a new. It's like when they say in AA, isn't it, a new life for an old life. Hmm. Maybe it's a bit like that. It's these pills are going to give you a new a new life. Yeah, and any anything new is 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 difficult to adjust to isn't it yeah but yeah that was a good question i can't remember what it was what was it when was i diagnosed or when did i know i was depressed well i just found out 10 things about you i didn't know that's amazing that's well, great everything after 13 years of marriage that's quite cool <laughs> I'm not sad at the moment. <laughs>